A large starship that appears to have crashed many, many years ago in this clearing now resembles an overgrown hill. Only a few crumpled exhaust ports and a rear stabilizing fin jut from the Earth, indicating that the bulk of the vessel must now be underground. The visible portions of the ship are all heavily weathered and corroded, except for a hatch between the exhaust ports and the fin. The hatch is currently open, and the inside of the hatch gleams with the shine of polished metal. Clearly, the interior of the ship is in better shape than its weathered and overgrown exterior. This sleek hall is well lit by gold-trimmed sconces and the blinking lights of a wall-mounted terminal near an exterior hatch to the west. The eastern end of the hall is crushed and collapsed, leaving only a doorway in an alcove to the southwest and another doorway in the center of the south wall. This enormous engine room did not fare well in the ship's crash. Huge turbines are knocked askew, wires hang loose, and red warning lights flare around the room. Most of the room is covered in moss and creeping vines. An area at the eastern end of the room contains two doors. The north door appears intact, while the east door is askew in its frame. What was once a door to the south is now nothing but charred slag destroyed in an explosion that seems much more recent than the other damage to the room. This large chamber appears to have been luxurious accommodations for a single occupant, with a single large bunk in the northwest and a desk of smooth metal to the east. Standing upright near the desk is a trident. The trident balances on the end of its haft and glows with white flames. The northern end of this partially destroyed area is a tangled mess of debris. Catwalks stretch from above the wreckage, with ladders bolted to the walls underneath. The ceiling here is 20 feet high, and passages lead out to the northeast and west. An enormous airlock door stands to the south, bent badly out of shape, with a glowing computer terminal on the wall next to it. This room contains enough bunk beds for a dozen people. Next to each bunk is a pair of personal lockers, each with a small keypad terminal. Several doors exit the area. This small but functional kitchen appears to be in good repair, although it's covered with sheets of yellowish-green mold. Narrow doors exit to the north and east. This medical bay is barely large enough for the single trauma bed in the room's northwest corner. Doors lead out of this room to the east and south. Although the front of this wide bridge has been crumpled, the rest of the room is in good repair. The nearly shattered forward viewpoint shows nothing but dirt and rock, with a few tough roots snaking in through the cracks. An opulent captain's chair sits atop a dais, and positions for the pilot, science officer, and gunner all seem ready for use. A complicated computer system to the right of the captain's chair has been carefully disassembled, with its pieces around it, neatly labeled as though from an archaeological dig. Three doors lead out to the west.